the Prince's Bride. By S. Morgenstern, Chapter One. Buttercup was raised on a small farm in the country of Florida. When Rob Reiner, director of last year's hit film Stand By Me, read William Golden's story, The Princess Bride, he knew it would make a great movie. An idea two-time Oscar winner Goldman had been pursuing for over 13 years. It has almost been made any number of times. And I've had studio executives who wanted to make it get fired. I had a studio that wanted to make it close. Uh, I've had directors get sick, all kinds of things. Well, fortunately for me, uh, my vision is very close to Bill's. I mean, I don't think Bill would have allowed me to do it unless we were very much in sync with how this film should have been made. I mean, he was very careful about this because it's his baby. I mean, it's his, his favorite thing that he's ever written. And he auditioned me, basically. 111, 8, 8, 14. Ready? And action. A month from now, I shall marry a lady who was once a commoner like yourselves. Would you like to meet her? Yes. The Princess Buttercup. This project was an enormous challenge for me from a, a production and technical standpoint. I've never done anything on, on this scale uh, with these kinds of uh, production problems. Cut. Good. The Princess Bride is a comic tale of true love and high adventure which takes place in a very imaginary medieval land. Reiner and producer Andrew Scheinman tackled this challenging project by putting together a production team capable of creating a fantastic yet frighteningly believable world. The first to join Reiner's team was production designer Norman Garwood, who was nominated for an Oscar for his work on Brazil. At Lee Shepperton Studios and the surrounding English countryside, he created the Kingdom of Florin. As a designer, it was uh, a great treat because it was uh, everything you'd want, really. This uh, fire swamps and pirate boats and hovel hovels and, and sort of uh, pits of despair, torture chambers. So, I mean, there was everything there. You couldn't actually self-indulge yourself. Uh, so everything I've attempted to do, or the art department's attempted to do, is basically to take everything one step further from find reality and then take it, you know, that one step further. The mythological land of Florin is inhabited by some strange and terrifying creatures, such as shrieking eels and R.O.U.S.s. Wesley, what about the R.O.U.S.s? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. These hideous creatures were created through the magic of special effects. One, two, four, five, six. Five. But when it came to the sword fighting sequences, Reiner couldn't rely on special effects. Mandy Patinkin and Carrie Elwes spent months preparing for a sword fighting scene during which they would fence with both left and right hands. Reiner made sure they were trained by a top fencing master. The initial sword fight was the thing that impressed me because uh, it was described uh, as the greatest sword fight since Errol Flynn and Burt Lancaster. Well, I'm fortunate. I've worked with both of these people. Who are you? No one of consequence. I must know. Get used to disappointment. Okay. So I was able to uh, think of how Flynn used to work and how Lancaster worked and uh, hopefully combine some of their uh, sort of skills in this particular sword fight. Reiner's film is populated by more than the standard dashing swashbucklers and beautiful maidens. One of the most unique characters is the 90-year-old Miracle Max. What? Reiner cast Billy Crystal as Max because he knew that Crystal and makeup artist Peter Montagna had used prosthetic makeup to create a diverse group of humorous characters on Saturday Night Live. This is my hand. It's also convenient because it's a map of London. This is Park Lane. This whole area here is Hyde Park. We're staying somewhere in here and then come to the studio all the way up this way. Staying, make sure you stay on the right side. We come back down this way and the studio's somewhere in my elbow. Liar! Liar! Get back!
that witch? I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. Carol Kane, who portrays Max's wife, Valerie, also had to undergo an elaborate makeup session. The startling transformation from Billy and Carol to Max and Valerie took over four hours to complete. Why'd you say that? This nose, thank heavens, is not my nose. This forehead is not my forehead. These eyes are not my eyes. I mean, these eyes have lenses on them, and this hair is not my hair. Although, it's very similar to my hair in texture, but it's not. So, none of this is me. This is what I'm stuck with at the end of the day. Know what I mean? Once you get those wrinkles in that neck, you know, you, you find that you retain water. <laughs> and your ankles swell and your kids don't write to you. You know, do the, the line down about the... Uh, takes 15 minutes for full potency, and then you should be up and going. By taking such special care in assembling this dedicated cast and crew, and then giving them the opportunity to contribute as much as they could, Reiner was free to do what he does best. Turn that up. Mark. Oh, I try to keep things simple. I always do. I mean, I don't know, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, I'm not... Uh, I'm not as technically proficient as guys like Spielberg and Lucas and these guys who can really, you know, put on a flashy show. I mean, I'm not, I'm not good at it, and so if I tried to, it, I probably wouldn't uh, be able to pull it off anyway. Finish it, finish it your way. Where, Looks like he's going after you, after you, and then you make it go. Okay, quiet, everyone. So my main abilities or focus is always on uh, the characters, the actors, and trying to keep the relationships. <laughs> Cut. Great. All right. Good. Print that one. We're on. Nine twenty.